Hi guys, my name is Megan from thebloggirlsandhomestead.com and today I want to share with you my two month old son's nighttime routine at the request of a lot of people. I have been blessed with kids who are actually pretty easy sleepers but I also have learned quite a few tips along the way and just some things to make it easier and a nighttime routine really helps. If you have something that you do every night, as soon as you do it the baby starts to get in the mode to sleep and it just makes it so much easier for putting them to bed. I still do a nighttime routine with my toddler and that's been super helpful and it helps there not be tantrums at bedtime and with him he just starts getting really tired once I start doing these things. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys and let's get right into this. So Dimitri is a little over two months old now and he's been doing so well with sleep and we've fallen into a really good routine that works so well for us. I also want to point out that I don't obsess over this if it doesn't get done every night, if we don't have time or just something messes it up. I, it's not the end of the world, I don't worry about it too much. Just because going at this the second time around, I do know that they will sleep eventually. For some reason, when I had my daughter, I had this idea that if I didn't sleep train her and do all these things like laying her down awake but drowsy that she would not sleep well for the rest of her life and that's just not true so this time around I'm way more chill about it and it's just been so much easier to just go with what the baby needs I've been able to really just enjoy it a lot more this time around so again this routine really does help to sleep but it does also doesn't guarantee it and it just really fits in with our evening schedule anyway because my daughter goes to bed around 7 or 7.30. Me and my husband have a little bit of time to do our reading and prayer, and then I get him ready for bed, and we will watch a show while I'm getting him to go to sleep. And then once he's in bed, we have like an hour or so to do just whatever we want together. So it's been really nice that he goes to bed a little before us, and he starts at night by himself, just because when the baby's with you all the time, and you go to bed at the same time the baby does, you don't have a lot of time for alone time with your spouse, which gets hard after a long time. So I usually try to have his last awake wake window around an hour to an hour and a half. I'll link some good articles about wake windows because they can really help. If your baby is overtired, they can have a really hard time falling asleep and staying asleep very well, which seems kind of counterproductive. You'd think the tireder you got the baby, the better they would sleep, but that's not really the case. And then also, if they're not tired enough, they'll have a really hard time falling asleep. They have different wake windows for different ages, and you also want to have the one right before bed just a little bit shorter than the rest of the ones during the day, I think. So just somewhere around there, I don't always even go by the time anymore. I just go by his sleepy cues. I can kind of tell when he's getting ready to go to bed. I also make sure that he doesn't sleep for more than a two hour stretch for a nap during the day. Because I want him to have his long stretches that are like three hours or more at night. And so a lot of times when babies are born and for the whole newborn stage, they might have their days and nights mixed up. And this really helped with, helps with that. Both him and my daughter had their days and, days and nights mixed up and just making sure that you wake them up every two hours but also not keeping them up too long when they're awake is really, really helps with that. So this routine takes about half an hour so I'll start just half an hour before I want him to be in bed. Usually I start getting him ready at 8.30 to be in bed by 9. And his bedtime's still pretty late because he's still really little and as he gets older his bedtime will shift earlier as he drops naps. When he was a newborn for like the whole first month, I would just keep him up with me until I went to bed and because I had just gone through labor and had a baby and I was really tired, I kind of just would go to bed at 9 every night and so I would just take him to bed with me and he would sleep with me. But now that he's over two months, I like to have a little bit of alone time in the evening. So the first thing I do is start his bath. We have an instant water heater which is amazing because I can just set exactly the temperature I want which is usually like 100 or 102 for his bath. And then I don't have to sit there and worry about the water temperature, I just know it's doing what I want it to. And so then while it's filling, I'll go gather up his new pajamas and his clean cloth diaper and a swaddle for him. And then by that time, the bath is usually ready for him to get in, so I'll undress him, put him in the bath. I like to bathe him by the sink. I just set his bathtub on top of the sink and it kind of fits on the edges of it. And that way, I can just be standing and it's like right up here at a good level for me to bathe him and I don't have to be leaning over in our bathtub and it hurts my back. And I wish I had done this with my daughter because I would just always give her her baths in this little bathtub, in our bathtub, so I'd have to lean over. I just love doing it on the counter. It's so much easier. He loves being bathed. He just gets so relaxed. He might have been like super cranky 
and ready to go to bed and tired and hungry and all that stuff. And then as soon as you put him in the bath, he's just like, oh, so happy and it's so cute. He just looks around and that's usually when he'll, you can get a couple smiles out of him, which it's really hard to make this kid smile. And he usually only ever does it to me, but the bath makes him smile. I use a little homemade baby wash that I make myself. I just use castile soap and some water and lavender essential oil and I just use a nice little soft muslin washcloth and I make sure I get on in all of those cracks. The tender grove cheese, as I like to call it. And then usually my husband helps me lift him out of the bath so I can get him wrapped up right away. But if he's busy for some reason, I'll just lay the towel out on our table and then I'll set him on it. I'll keep my hand under his head just so he's not like laying on the hard table and then I'll use the other hand to like wrap it over his body as fast as I can because I just feel so bad. I, I hate getting out of the shower because it's so cold so I can't... Ah, oh, it's... I don't want it to be cold for very long. And then I take him over to the couch and I'll put on his clean clothes and his diaper, the diaper first. One time I did forget to put the diaper on and then I started nursing him and I was like, why does his butt feel so small? And I realized that I forgot to put his cloth diaper on. So that would have been bad to find out in the middle of the night. And then I'll nurse him. And normally, I'm a one-side nurser, so all of his feedings during the day and throughout the whole night, I do on one side, and then the next time I'll do on the other side. Just because I have plenty of milk, I don't need to worry about nursing on both sides to keep my supply up or anything. But the one time a day that I do nurse on both sides is the one right before bed, because that's his longest stretch. I want my breasts to be kind of evened out before I go to bed. I don't want to have one lopsided that's like leaking all night. I just want him to be kind of empty before I get in bed for his long stretch without eating. And then the other thing that I do is I try to time so that the first feeding in the middle of the night is on the opposite side as it was the other night because I don't want to teach one breast to produce a ton of milk in the middle of the night and the other one like drop off its supply. So I, I'll put him to bed, I'll, I'll nurse him on both sides, I'll put him to bed and then his next feeding, I try to remember which one it was. That's like the, the that's the main feeding that I pay most attention to doing it the opposite opposite side as I did the last time. I don't know if this is even making any sense, but if you know what I mean, I just try to make sure that they're evenly nursed on from, you know, night to night. I just, I, words are so hard. Once he's done nursing, I'll burp him, which is actually a newer thing for me, surprisingly, even though I've had a baby. But Sophia was one of those weird babies who never needed to bur be burped. She was never got upset stomachs. She spit up once her entire life. And so I just never needed a burper. And then when he was born, he would projectile vomit. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And I had to learn to burp baby, even though this is my second baby. So he just doesn't sleep very well if I leave that little bubble in his stomach. So I make sure I burp him. And then after that, I will get him swaddled nice and tight. And I use the muslin swaddle blankets or the knit swaddle blankets. I don't really like the ones with the Velcro or the, the zippers or anything. I have a tutorial on my channel with tips on how to get a really nice tight swaddle with just a blanket, not anything fancy. And then also a little trick to keep them from escaping if they're getting big enough to escape from that even. So I will link that video below for you guys. Now the reason I swaddle him after he nurses is because I don't really want to teach him to have to nurse before bed to go to sleep. Not that I'm against nursing to sleep, which that's what I do all night long, so it's not because I'm trying not to create sleep crushes. It's mainly because I want to get him to go to sleep in a way that my husband could maybe do it if I needed to deal with our daughter or I was sick or something, then he could just do whatever I do because he can't nurse the baby. So then he could like bounce on our exercise ball, which is how I get him to go to sleep. So yes, I bounce on our exercise ball with him all swallowed up like a burrito and he just loves that so much. I think it's because I bounced on that a lot when I was pregnant, so he remembers the motion. And it's funny because I rocked in the rocking chair a lot when I was pregnant with my, do with my daughter, and that was the best way to get her to go to sleep when she was born. So they remember things from the, before they were born. So I bounce on the exercise ball until he falls asleep, and then I bring him in here, and I lay him in his playpen right next to our bed. Sometimes he won't stay asleep, and it might take him up to three tries before I can get him to stay asleep for the night but usually he stays the first time. He takes all of his naps on me during the day in this wrap, so that's the one time of day that I have him sleep by himself and it's just a really nice habit for him to keep because I really do need that alone time with Luke at least a little bit during the day. People say that you're supposed to lay them down drowsy but awake, which is so ridiculously hard if you've ever tried that. It's like impossible. And in my opinion, babies his age especially aren't really developmentally ready for that. They kind of need their mother's touch, they, they need someone to comfort them and 
rock them and I am so not against having something like rocking or nursing to sleep that gets their baby to go to sleep because it just really helps. It's it's so nice to just not have to worry about it and obsess over like trying to trick them into falling asleep by themselves which is what it turns into. Some babies do just fine putting themselves to sleep and that's amazing and that's if you if your baby can totally do that then do that because that that would be really nice. But when I had my daughter I thought this was a huge deal. Everyone's like, you have to put your baby down in bed, awake but drowsy. And so I was obsessive over doing it. It stressed me out so bad and it didn't ever work. And I ended up just giving up and she is like a year and a half and she sleeps through the night. I can put her down up there awake and she's fine. Like they will do it when they're ready. So this time around, now that I've seen that they will eventually sleep, I don't worry about it all with him and it's just been so nice to just have a l one less thing to be stressed about. Right now he will sleep after I put him down for bed at night so until somewhere around 3.30 to 5.30. It really just depends on the night and if he got too much sleep during the day or just like a various number of factors. Also it really depends on how stressed I am because if I'm stressed out he doesn't sleep very well at all. If it's earlier than that when he wakes up I We'll usually try to give him his pacifier to see if I can get him go, to go back to sleep. If I can just hold him over with a pacifier, then his stomach will start learning to go longer and longer stretches, which now that he is 13 pounds or something now, so he could totally go a really long stretch at night. So I'll try to give him his pacifier to hold him over till about 3.30 to 5.30. Anywhere in there, if he wakes up, I'll just get him. And then I will just bring him to bed with me and I'll nurse him sideline and he'll just sleep with me for the rest of the night. Usually I'll feed him that one time around 4.30ish or whenever he woke up the first time and then he'll sleep just right by me until like 6.30 to 7 and then I'll just nurse him one more time and we'll get up for the day. I could just get up and nurse him when we're up but I just really enjoy snuggling him and my daughter was not a snuggly baby at all and she wasn't even a huge fan of nursing like she didn't really nurse for comfort. And we could never figure out the sideline position for nursing, so I've been so enjoying that he'll nurse sideline. He just sleeps so well right by me at night. He just kind of like curls up right in front of my stomach and just nestles in and goes to sleep and it's just so awesome. So that's his nighttime routine. The main thing that I try to keep in mind with babies is that I feel like it is important for them to have like a sleep cue. Like you give them their bath or you sing them a certain song or you put a lotion on that smells like lavender, like a certain scent or you read them a story. Like something that happens only at that time of day. So nursing wouldn't really work because I nurse him all day and all night, so that's not really a sleep cue for him. It just really helps to get them in the frame of mind for sleeping. But also don't obsess over getting like a certain cue, if you know what I mean. Like a lot of people say baths are like the best thing to do. Like that's the main thing people recommend to do. But some babies don't like baths and it riles them up, so just find what works for your baby. Sometimes it might change. Like I would give my daughter a bath and then nurse her just like I do with him. And then as she got older and I wanted to wean her and she didn't like to take baths every night anymore, it would kind of rile her up. Then I, I added in reading a story and brushing her teeth every night. So I would do those four things. And then when she was used to the two new things, I would phase out of the two old things just so that the she learned to, t to use the story and the brushing her teeth as her sleeping cues. But my main piece of advice for all of you mamas out there, which I know it's so hard when your baby's not sleeping and it's just like all you can think about when your baby's waking up like every hour is like sleep is an obsession at that point. And I so totally get that. But if you can do your best to just know that this will pass, they will sleep eventually. And the less you can be stressed about it, really the better they will sleep. So I know that's probably what everyone says, but it is so true. And I, it took me until my second baby to learn that, but it's been so much easier this time around. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys or gave you some encouragement because no matter what they're doing right now, or if you have no routine at night or you're just totally being in it, they will sleep eventually. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.